All right, so welcome. This is going to be our first uh, lecture for my session on uh, on inlaid chemistry. And just you've done some of this with uh, Professor Nautilu already, but um, this is the basic kind of idea that you've you've looked at so far. You have a carbonyl compound with hydrogens which are alpha to that, and we know if we treat that with a base. All right, some base that we'll get a deprotonation occurring from the very acidic hydrogens which are next door to that, and we form the uh, enolate, right? O minus. We can form that, which we know is resonance stabilized with uh, this uh, form, this tautomer uh, as well, which is the minus on the carbon. All right, now <clears throat> all the chemistry we're going to be doing is on this. Now we've got, uh, gosh, half the course that you're going to be covering uh, in third year this year is based on this type of chemistry. Now of course if it was as simple as, as this, we would, uh, um, it wouldn't take just five minutes to explain it. There are a lot of things that go on in this chemistry that we're going to have to learn about, different flavors, if you will, of this type of reaction. So we need to understand the basics of this and then we're going to move on from there. The important thing though is that we can do things with this enolate because the enolate oxygen has got a negative over there but in this form the carbon's got a negative and atoms that have negative charges on them get to be good uh, nucleophiles uh, and it turns out that with enolates uh, we can use both of these centers to act as a nucleophile and there is some complicated um, uh, chemistry involved in which we choose, but almost all of the chemistry you're going to be looking at, and I say almost all, it's not everything, almost all of the chemistry you will look at is going to be reactions where we are doing something with the carbon that's got the negative. Now, here's the confusion. The most important tautomer is this enolate form over here, where the negative is on the oxygen. So we need to just remember that. This is the way we should draw it all the time. But we need to think of this more along the lines of it having a carbon with a negative charge. And so that when we react that with some sort of electrophile, I don't know what this electrophile is, we'll come back to that, that this negative charge can react with the electrophile and we get a new uh, bond being formed. And this is the most important thing of this chemistry is the formation of a new bond like that. All right, so in this first lecture, what I want to cover is just an overview of all the different types of flavors in terms of the different components that we have, just to put things into perspective of where we're going to be moving forward. This is a lot of information, but some of the core things need to be understood at this point. So I want us to do it now. And over the following weeks, we're going to learn more and more and get more familiar with the different uh, aspects of this. So let us start, first of all, with uh, the carbonyl compound itself. I've drawn it as a very generic structure over there, but this R group could be a whole host of different things. So the first thing that we're going to uh, look at, as I said, is the flavors of the carbonyl. How many different ways can the carbonyl compound uh, come out? Uh, for instance, uh, the carbonyl might be part of an aldehyde that looks something like that. Okay, that's the most simplest aldehyde, ethanol. Uh, it might be part of a keto, uh, which looks like that. So that's just a simple keto, an acetone. Uh, it might be part of uh, an ester. So we have something there, maybe an O and a methyl group over there. All right, there is a methyl ester. Uh, it could be for part of a carboxylic acid like that. Uh, there's one more thing that this uh, could be part of, So, and I want you to just think about it, it shouldn't be too hard, to come up with another flavor, if you will, of this carbonyl compound, which would satisfy uh, it being next door to protons, hydrogens, which are next door to a carbonyl. Okay, so we have H, we have carbon, we've got oxygen over there, what else could it be? Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, another flavor, of things that we need to look at is the base. So we've got flavors uh, of base. Now, 
This is probably one of the more difficult things for you starting uh, off again with organic chemistry. You've had a long break uh, from this uh, and is understanding the different types of bases that we get. Uh, if you've done inorganic chemistry, you will have seen a few more of these, but I want to just uh, re-familiarize yourselves with the, the types of bases which we typically see in synthetic chemistry. And we start off with, it's always good to start the simplest one, it's the the O minus types of bases. The simplest one, of course, is hydroxide. All right, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, it's really easy, but uh, all the O minus bases have relatively the same sort of strength, and you don't have to have an H there, you could have a methyl group over there. This is methoxide, it's from methanol. Uh, you could have ethoxide, which ethyl group on an oxygen, which is from ethanol, all right, uh, and quite a useful one, uh, it's a little bit stronger than the rest, is tertiary butoxide, okay, T-butoxide, okay, tertiary butyl oxide, this is a sterically hindered uh, uh, oxygen type base. Relatively speaking though, the oxygen ones are kind of weakish, they're not uh, very, very uh, strong bases, uh, but I want to talk about another base, which is also actually relatively weak, but it's a little bit more interesting than the oxygen-based ones, and that is sodium hydride. It's the H- type of base, okay? And this base is relatively weak, but it has an advantage in reactions, and that is that when H- acts as a base, it picks up another H and it's going to form hydrogen. Now, of course, hydrogen is a gas, and normally, of course, because it's a gas, it will be given off in a reaction. And because it's given off in a reaction, during a reaction, the fact that you're using, even though it's a slightly weakish base, uh, the fact that you're using it means that this, when you use sodium hydride, it is an irreversible process that is occurring. All right, so when the hydrogen is given off, it's an irreversible process, so it can shift an equilibrium all the way to the end. Hydroxides, these ones cannot do that. This is a very important thing to think about. All right, and then we have the N minus bases. These are strong. The, when you've got a nitrogen with a negative charge on it, it is a very, very strong base. Okay, negative charge. And there are two important ones which you need to know for this course. Um, the one is, looks like this. There's two isopropyl groups on it. It's a minus charge. Generally speaking, the counter ion is lithium. And so it's abbreviated lithium diisopropyl amide. All right, you need to go and look that up. Put that into Google, LDA. Uh, when I did that, I, my first hit was the Limpopo Department of Agriculture. It doesn't stand for that. All right, It uh, stands for lithium diisopropylamide. You'll find it if you look hard enough in Wikipedia. Go and look this up. It's a good base. Uh, and then the other one looks almost the same. It's just instead of these isopropyl groups, we have silicon groups on. And the silicon groups all have uh, three methyl groups on them like that. Okay, sorry, silicon, and it's also negative, and it can be lithium there, it could be potassium, it could be a number of different ones. This one is LHMDS. Go and look it up, know what this stands for, lithium hexamethyl disilazide. Google it, you'll get that. Okay, that's the third thing you needed to do. Number one, what was the other one over here? Uh, fits, fits in this series. Look up LDA, look up HMDS, get to know those bases. They are very important. They are strong bases, and we use them a lot. And the last one is the carbon-centered bases. Uh, the typical example of this is N-butyl lithium. A lot of you may have already seen this. It's just uh, four carbons, butyl, and that carbon is negatively charged, and it has the lithium uh, counter ion to it. So this carbon is the, the basic part. It's able to pick up a proton. It's very, very, very basic. And it comes in a number of different flavors. S. Buley for sick Buley, which will look like this. And then another very common one, highly pyrophoric, is T. Buley, tertiary butyl lithium, which looks like that. 
Very, very strong bases, these ones. We may not see them that often, but they may come up, and it, it, you do need to uh, be aware of these bases. Okay, so um, we've done the flavors of the carbonyl. We've done the flavors of the, uh, the bases. Uh, then this whole course is going to be really broken down into the flavors of the electrophile and the flavors of the enolate itself. Uh, and we're going to look at the different types of electrophiles that we can use, and that goes over all the different chapters in Claydon. And also, the enolate itself, this is the basic concept, but it does come in a whole lot of different uh, uh, types of enolate that we're going to learn about, which are important in order to do certain reactions. Um, and so we're going to be covering that. For now, uh, what I want to do is just to quickly, in the last few minutes, is just to do one reaction with you, just looking at uh, starting with the flavors of the electrophile. Uh, and this is with looking at the al uh, alkylating agents. And this is what we will cover in our first uh, uh, lecture, and we'll be going on with this, uh, these types of things. So alkylating reagents, an electrophile that's uh, a carbon-centered, some sort of R group that is bonded to something with a leaving group on it. And from first year, hopefully you remember that X often represents your halogens, uh, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You know, if you are trying to think of a good leaving group to put on for a reaction, always choose bromine. It's a great middle of the range, very good leaving group, fairly stable compounds, and easy to, to work with. So, uh, yeah, we do a reaction. So, I'm going to do this reaction where I'm taking acetophenone. All right, that is acetophenone. Uh, I think I've spelled it wrong. Uh, acetophenone. And I am going to react it with one equivalent of... Uh, LDA, you looked it up now, so you, you, you know what that is, just one equivalent of that. And then I'm going to react it with uh, benzyl bromide, which looks like that. So LDA is a very strong base. What it's going to do, it's going to deprotonate, all right, one of those hydrogens that's over there. It's a base, pick up that hydrogen, and we're going to form our Enolate. That will be our intermediates. It'll look like this. There's our enolate. Okay, first step, two marks and all these questions. Very easy to do. Next step is now this is going to react with our electrophile and enolates always react the same way. The negative charge comes in like this and then the pi electrons over here attack our electrophile. So I'll just redraw the electrophile uh, over here is the bromine. This is the carbon that's got the leaving group on it. And so this attacks. Notice we show the electrons moving from the pi bond onto the carbon over there, and the bromine can leave. And now we formed a bond between this carbon and this carbon. Guys, really, it is a good idea to number your, this might be a fairly simple example, but it is a good idea to number your carbons. You can give any numbers you want. Um, just to see that this carbon is connected to that one, two is going to form a bond to three, three is bonded to this aromatic. So when we draw out our product, it looks something like this. We can actually just check to make sure that we haven't lost a carbon. Seriously, it's a good idea. One is bonded to the carbon that is the oxygen, there's one, one was bonded to two, two forms the bond to three, and three was connected to the phenyl group over there. So we haven't lost any carbons, we've done everything, and it's worked, and it's been, uh, it's been good like that. Okay, so as I finish off here, I'm gonna give you an example, uh, something that doesn't work, and I want you to think about, from what I've said so far, um, I'll give you some clues, uh, why this reaction didn't work. So I did this, I took some sodium hydroxide, I added, um, allyl bromide, okay, it's allyl bromide, and what I wanted to happen was I wanted, you should actually be able to draw this out, the expected product uh, would have been uh, this, okay, what well, I got a very low yield, that I hardly saw any of that, and what I did get uh, was basically starting material plus 
this over here. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about this. I want you to explain to me why this happened, all right? And I want you to tell me how would you have done this reaction in order to have got this product over here, which is the product that we wanted. All right, so have a think about that. Start reading your textbook in this, uh, uh, on this area, and we'll be doing some examples in class to, to solidify this idea. All right.